Hi everybody! Woo Happy book club! Welcome to our March book club. We're reading The Atomic Habit. Um, once again, I loved this book. Um, I apologize, I have a cough drop. Deadlines don't wait for one to be healthy. So, gotta do this. Gotta get it out on time. So, I'm feeling very well, thank you. It just sounds way worse than it actually is. But anyway, this month, um, I loved reading this book. I actually re I read this entire book on a plane ride from Washington, D.C. to San Diego. And there were so many cool things about this book. I am. It's going to be nearly impossible covering just a small fraction of it on this book club. So I highly recommend this book. I also highly recommend the audio version of it, which is how I finished reading the book because I kind of ran out of time. Um, I said I read the entire book, but I was like, uh, just about like 30 pages short from finishing it and sitting down was just not happening. So I finished the rest of it listening to it and it was actually a really good listen to. So uh, I recommend doing it that way. I'm Chris Scrat with Organizing Maniacs. We are a professional organizing company uh, outside of Washington, D.C. And we specialize in working with clients with brain-based challenges. So a lot of our clients have ADD, ADHD, OCD, and hoarding tendencies. And we help clients create amazing systems while they're living in their homes. We also help people uh, pack and unpack and set up good systems in their new home. I, every month, create this very cool little report about the book club. If you'd like to receive this in your inbox, you can subscribe to that on our website at organizingmaniacs.com. You can also download the report from this video if you're interested in having it. So um, that's that. This book boils down to a couple of really unique messages. And the first one is, which is something that I have firmly believed in for a real long time, that is like a core value to me and how we help our clients, which is that tiny changes can make a huge difference. And I think that we have come to believe that in order to succeed at anything, we have to make this like massive transformation. And I believe that it's not the truth. And the author uh, clearly wrote that, uh, which I was like, oh my God, this guy is in my head. Uh, there were so many things that he wrote about that I was like, oh, I've believed that for such a long time and it was really cool for me to just read it in his book. So, you know, making the smallest of changes can make a huge difference. If you are a person that believes that you are disorganized and maybe you can start by, you know, organizing your kitchen counter. I have a friend that um, always talks about how messy she is and f over the last few years she has made one commitment that she would not go to sleep with dishes in her sink. And it's amazing how just that one commitment to herself just has such a huge impact in her life. And every night, doesn't matter how messy her home is, she cleans uh, her dishes and her sink is always um, empty and, and clean. And that makes her feel so good. So I'm thinking there's always one thing we can improve on and there's always one tiny difference we can make to get started in our new habit. The other thing that was really interesting in this book for me is the difference between actually having goals and then creating systems to achieve those goals. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, as well. And uh, the third thing that really stood out for me is that you are who you believe you are. <laughs> so I tell this to my clients all the time. It's like, stop saying you're disorganized and start saying, I am an organized person in progress. You know, if you don't believe you are an organized person, that's fine. But at the very least say, you are an organized person in progress. So every time you start thinking like, oh, I'm so disorganized. Oh, this is never going to work for me. Oh, I have tried everything. Just reframe that to, to say something different. So your brain starts thinking differently and then it starts supporting your goals. So a couple of one in really interesting quote from the book is that the cost of your good habits are in the present and the cost of your your bad habits are in the future i was like ah oh, that's like brilliant because you know that defines it like good habits 
are just valuable today, but your bad habits are gonna cost you tomorrow. So either way, you pay for it, right? I love T's definition of a habit, which was like super simple. It says a habit is a routine or behavior that is performed daily and in many cases automatic. He also said, it is easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making a small improvement on a daily basis. We think we need to make massive success and that requires massive actions. And this whole book, I mean, it is the title of the book, right? Atomic Habit. Atomic is a tiny little particle and his whole concept is that you don't have to make massive changes for anything to change and improve. The smallest the change, the better you are at continue doing it and the more likely that over time that will have an impact on you. Habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. I was like, ah, that's like deep. You know, success is in the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformation. And just recently, and I apologize because sometimes these books always start to blend in, but he talked about, and I want to say it was in peak performance where he talked about there are these landmark deadlines that we can make for ourselves, right? And the most popular one is like January 1st. We always wake up on January 1st and we have all of these ideas about how we're going to change our lives. And you don't have to wait until January 1st. Like every Monday can be a landmark or every Tuesday or every Friday or your birthdays or anniversaries or whatever. You can pick different ways to get started. So don't wait until these, these once in a lifetime moments to make a big transformation like start developing new habits today. There is a difference between setting goals and creating goals. Success in achieving your goals has to do with setting good systems that will help you attain your goals. Goals are about results you want to achieve and systems are about the processes that lead to those results. So goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. And I think that where, where that comes true for our clients is that sometimes I work with people and they say things like, I want to go organize my entire office in like five minutes. And I'm like, eh. well, maybe they don't say five minutes, but they say like, I want to organize my entire office in one day. And that's not realistic, right? The average person takes about two full days to organize their office. And that would include creating a basic filing system. So if you have never filed before, or if your filing system is too complicated, that's not gonna work for you. So what he's saying is that your goal to get your office organized is great. But if you don't have a system, one, to get your office organized, or two, to maintain the office organization that you have created, you're basically just gonna run around throwing things away and then tomorrow you're gonna wake up and you're not gonna have a system. So you're going to go back to the exact same habits you used to have. And I see that happen time and time again. I see people, you know, talk about like, oh, I'm just gonna clean up my office today and then throw everything away because they get reckless in instead of ruthless. And before you know it, the mail comes tomorrow and what do you do with that stuff? If you don't have a system to manage that, it's only gonna go back to accumulating all over again. So that was extremely powerful to understand that, yes, it's, it's fine and great to have goals, but if you don't have the systems to make you accountable, to keep your goals on track, they're only gonna get you spinning around and not really getting you anywhere. He talked about that research has shown that once a person believes in a, a particular aspect of their identity, they are more likely to act in alignment with that belief. So you should say daily, just like I just said, I'm an organized person. And by simply believing that you are an organized person, you will be much more likely to become an organized person, right? It's the power of positive thinking. He also believes that you know, you can start with the smallest thing. So if you think, 
I hear people say this a lot. If you think that organized people make their bed every day and you start making your bed every day and you start saying, I'm an organized person, I make my bed. That in itself can make a significant improvement on your belief system about being more organized, which then can lead to all kinds of other reassessments of your beliefs that can make you more organized. Now, I know what you're thinking. I like you said you work with people that have ADD and people that have ADD are not disorganized because they want to be disorganized, right? That is a brain wiring that has nothing to do with belief systems. So yes, I 100% agree with that. And then there's something to be said about just creating one new habit, right? So what he's saying is that, yes, there's part of it that there's a belief system, and I agree with that. And then there's part of it that is actionable, which is making your bed. So if you are a person that already makes your bed and you feel like you are more organized, does that improve your daily habits? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that I find that creating habits are really difficult for, and making your bed may just help you feel like you're in control of your space and making you feel like you're more organized and therefore may, may, it may transpire in other aspects of your daily life, which is really what he's saying. I don't know how that really impacts some people with ADD. I just think that sometimes you have to start somewhere and that was one suggestion that he makes that I tend to agree with. I mean, he basically says that outcomes are about what you get processes are about what you do and identity is about what you believe in and if you believe in something right you are more likely to create outcomes that are more aligned with who you are and that you you're more likely to create processes that go with what your belief system is i don't know how the research applies to people with add but i think sometimes you have to start somewhere so he has a framework a framework that he created which i thought was really interesting and there's a substantial amount of description and writing about it that i'm not going to attempt to summarize into this video just because i i just feel like it was such a powerful way to describe the framework that it would be best to be read in the book however i'm going to summarize it in the book report if you're interested in having that but the framework that he has for habit creation is a four part series and it says make it obvious make it attractive make it easy and make it satisfying so if you want to get more organized right make it obvious would mean like get a pretty bin to put your paperwork in so if you came home every day and you have a place if you are used to like putting your mail in all corners of your house out of a sudden now you have this like obvious pretty basket where you would be putting your incoming mail every day. Make it attractive. So make it something that is simple for you to do. Don't make it super complicated. So put the basket in a place where you walk by to see it when you're going into your house, right? Maybe it's at the front door, maybe it's on your counter, maybe it's somewhere super simple to see, which goes with like making it easy and make it satisfying. So by making it satisfying what he was saying is like make sure that you're rewarding yourself in the process so if you come home and you put your mail in the basket every single day for like six days on sunday do something special to like you know acknowledge yourself for putting the mail in the basket every single day and now being able to find your bills and making it being able to pay them on time or, you know, treat yourself to something that you normally would have had to not because you had to pay late fees or something on your credit card. There were some three really interesting applicable tips that I thought I shared with you inside of the framework. And the first one was like hearing a bad habit spoken aloud makes the consequences more real. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, is that kind of like calling yourself out? And I was like, that's pretty powerful. Cause if you say like, Ooh, if I drink this tea, it's going to make my teeth brown and I don't want my teeth to be brown. So I'm going to stop drinking tea. Right. So I can hear those words in my inside of my head. And that makes a difference. He also talked about habit stacking and I have read about this in other books and people have called it habit pairing and 
I'm a huge fan of it personally. I always forget to take the trash out. That's like the worst chore for me. And so I pair that with like a couple of things that happen every single week. So Wednesdays, my trash is normally on Thursdays, but Wednesday nights, I remember to like take out the trash, water the plants and do a couple other things. So I stack all of these kind of horrible house chores that one has to do because got to contribute to the world and live and take the trash out. So I stack them all together this, the same night and then I get them all done. And that has become a habit for me. I never forget to take the trash out anymore. I didn't forget to take the trash out. I just forgot to put them out on the street, which is kind of just as bad. But anyway, I just thought I'd explain that. So I now get the water, you know, the plants water, the trash taken out, the recycling taken out, and a couple more things done every single Wednesday. That makes me super happy. I don't have to worry about those things. So that's basically what he was calling habit stacking. So the idea is to take a habit you already have that really works. And for me, that was watering the plants. I always water the plants on Wednesday. And then stacking a couple other things that are not so obvious or not so enjoyable, trash removal with the plant watering. And so now that I've stacked them together, they never get forgotten, right? Another example of that would be to like floss your teeth when you're brushing, right? You already brush your teeth every day, or so I assume. And then flossing it at the same time just seems like a habit that goes together. So that's habit stacking. And the third tip that he talks about, which I thought was really cool, is that your environment supports your habits. And we heard this before in the book by Benjamin Harding, Willpower Doesn't Work, which I also have a book club on if you're interested in that. So your environment supports your habit. And by that means if you are a person trying to be more organized with your paperwork, right? Don't bring all your junk mail inside of your office. Set up some sort of a recycling system by the front door or by where you read the mail or in a place where you can easily sort the good mail into the basket and the recyclable into the bin. And that way your environment starts supporting this idea that your office is going to be more organized. It talks about the cardinal rule of behavior change and that's reward. <laughs> and who doesn't like rewards? I think the more I read about habit formation, you cannot have good habit formation without rewarding yourself. And what is pretty powerful here it says, what is immediately rewarded is repeated. What is immediately punished is avoided. Uh, don't we remember that from when we were kids, right? That still applies as an adult. One of the greatest threats to success is not failure, it's boredom. And all of my clients with ADD will totally understand what this is all about because boredom comes so easily to them. And I hear this from people all the time. Like, how do I keep my habits when I just get bored with them? Like, I'm really good at starting something and then it works really well for a while and then I stop doing it because I'm bored with it. And what he was suggesting was to create a variable system. So think of it like a slot machine, right? Our brains gets totally complacent with the idea that you're giving yourself the same reward or you're getting the same results. So you have to create variety. And sometimes that is something for each one of us to decide what the variety is and how do we reward ourselves. But there was a lot that he talked about that had to do with variable rewards and it basically had the roots in gambling and i thought like how can i create an applicable tip for people that would make them feel like they got something out of this so i would recommend creating a list of things that you would reward yourself with when you got something done so let's say you said you're going to read your mail every single sunday and you're going to put your mail in the basket every single day of the week so from Monday through Saturday, you get your mail, you put it in the basket. On Sunday, you reward yourself. So create a list of rewards that you would be giving yourself, maybe like six of them, right? And then you call your best friend and tell your best friend, like roll the dice and tell me what the number is. So whatever the number is, 
that was the number from the list of rewards, then you get to reward yourself with that one thing. And then every week your friend gets to roll the dice and the dice gets to pick the reward you get. So you never know what the reward is gonna be, right? So I would put on the list some things that are like outrageously amazing and some things that are like a little mediocre. And maybe you'll be excited to find out if you're getting the super amazing thing or the mediocre thing. I don't know, just an idea of how you can keep that interesting. And the one last thing that I learned, which once again, it's not brand new, right? But it's just, it was just reaffirming to read that in a book is the power of accountability. So whether you hire a professional organizer like us or whether you call your mom or your best friend or your sister or your brother, whoever it is that you call to be accountable for, just make sure that you tell somebody where your goals are because the fact that you're calling somebody and you're telling somebody, it immediately makes you more accountable than if you just said, mm, I'm gonna organize my office, right? Now, there are a couple of things that you can do with that, right? You can create a punishment system and you can tell your brother or sister, whoever your accountability buddy is, that if you don't read your mail every Sunday, that you have to give them like $50 or you have to write a $50 check to your favorite charity. What he recommends is to make the punishment really punishment. Don't make it light punishment, you know, like, Maybe 50 bucks is not enough for you to be motivated to like put your mail in the basket and then read it every Sunday. Maybe you need like a $200 punishment. I don't know what that punishment is, but you need to make it so it really motivates you to actually get that goal accomplished. And then make your buddy help you be accountable. So I wanna finish off with a quote. If you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And if you don't have any systems, you're pretty much out of luck. Anyway, this month's book club was The Atomic Habit by James Clear. I'm Chris Scrott with Organizing Maniacs, and I'll see you again next month. Thanks. Bye.